Hi, I'm Becky Plummer. Um, I'm a software developer, but I'm also a team leader with Bloomberg. Um, I work on pretty much collaboration tools, so helping people exchange information and their ideas. Um, that's what I do every day. It's a lot of fun. Um, I want to talk about what the future looks like in 2050, but specifically for women in technology. I think for similar to a lot of the other talks that have happened, we need to kind of look at the past, right? What, what's happened in technology specifically? Where have we been? Well, there's been a lot of really exciting technological advances. I'd say, I want to say 1950, but really it's a little bit wider of a gap. The internet, who doesn't love the internet? Okay, <laughs> the personal computer. Okay, we've all got one in our pocket now. Um, the pacemaker, really important. The insulin pump, television, the vacuum, and the smoke detector. Think of a technological advance that you know of that was created by a woman. Show of hands, how many of you can think of just an advance that was made by a woman? Okay, cool. Think of, if, show of hands, um, how many of you can think of a technological innovation that was made by a woman? Okay, a few. <laughs> All right, well hopefully after this talk there will be a few more hands. <laughs> okay, so here's some examples that I learned about um, when I was preparing for this talk. The syringe, who knew about that? Central heating. Who doesn't love central heating, especially in this room right now? <laughs> Residential solar heating. The refrigerator. The dishwasher. The foundations for telecom and Wi-Fi. Who doesn't like Wi-Fi? Okay. And Kevlar. Kevlar is pretty important, right? Okay, awesome. So in 1950, Women made up about 29% of the workforce in the post-war era. We all kind of know, you know what happened there. And that's increased to the well-known number of about 47%, still not entirely equal. But currently, around 14% of senior level executive positions in 14, Fortune 500 companies are held by women. It's a lower number, right? But did you know that around 40%, last year it was a little bit less, but around 40% of new businesses are started by women? Did you know that? It's a pretty big number if you ask me. I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. I'll give you some recent examples. Um, you can shout out any that you've also, you know, you've thought of, you can add. 23andMe, chromosome mapping, figuring out where you're from. Pretty cool, right? SlideShare, okay, maybe I should have used it. <laughs> you could be looking at some things. Skim links, figuring out you know, who's clicking what and where your things are going. Stayful, how to find small businesses when you want to travel. And Little Bits, who do, does anybody know Little Bits out in the audience? Okay, Little Bits are really exciting. They're these little um, pieces of like a circuit board that kids can use to like make something happen. It's, some, it's a kit that you can buy. Look it up, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, are there any other examples that you can think of off the top of your head? Anyone want to shout anything out? Okay, moving on. Let's talk about some co-founded businesses. I was actually surprised to find that I knew more of the names on co-founded businesses than I did of just women-founded businesses. Flickr, okay. TaskRabbit, yes. HTC, who has one of those in their pocket? Okay. <laughs> iRobot, cool, huh? Also, the CTO of One Laptop Per Child is a woman. Does anybody know One Laptop Per Child? Cool, a couple people, sweet. So what does all of this mean for 2050? Well, the growth of women is currently a priority. Who's had a conversation about you know, women and technology in the past? There's definitely a few of you because I was talking to you at the break. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, well, the focus on raising the women's profile in STEM across all the different STEM fields, not just technology, is a priority. We have organizations like the WISE Campaign in the UK, we have NC Wet and Grace Hopper in the US, and we're going to bring Grace Hopper into the, um, at least the UK, hopefully Europe as well. We're going to really be pushing for change, right? So we're going to see some changes. I'm, I'm going to be bold and say that we will definitely see a difference in the pr presence of women in technological fields. It's currently around 18%. Um, I think in 2050, this is no longer gonna be something we're even talking about. That'd be cool, right? 
So in 2050, with more women in STEM fields and more women in senior positions, we're going to actually see a shift in the type of companies. Why? I mean, things are going pretty well right now, right? Well, women are definitely interested in technology for, for a purpose. Um, in a recent CMU study, women emphasized the importance of integrating computing with people and other areas. So we're going to start to see things that do things. Building upon this, women prefer to work in a collaborative environment. And companies with women on their boards are more successful than those with no female representation. So things are definitely going to change. Um, so with more gender diversity in senior positions, what's, what's going to happen? This is the fun part, OK? This is where we can actually start predicting and, and making some ideas. So let's try to predict the future based on some of the previous talks that we've heard. So products are going to be more focused on increasing the quality of life for the individual. That's my prediction. So I'm just brainstorming here. But drawing upon some of the innovations in health and medicine, what about extending an inexpensive device like this? Does anybody know what this is? Fitbit? Anybody heard of Fitbit? Yes, OK. So what about extending a device like this that can actually figure out how many calories I've intake instead of just output, right? Um, OK, calories, great. What if it could tell me, hey, you're doing pretty well you know, in your eating this week or today? That'd be pretty awesome, right? That would start to move me in a healthier direction. That'd be awesome. OK, what if it's not monitoring food, but instead it's monitoring your reproductive health, and you could figure out when is the best time to get pregnant, if that's something you want to do. You guys are in school. Maybe not right now. Maybe in a few years. <laughs> but that'd be pretty cool, right? I mean, think about in a developing nation. Like, hey, that'd be pretty important to either know when you want to have kids or when you might want to wait a little while, right? OK, cool. So normally, these kind of things are something we need a doctor for, right? Well, in some parts of the world, doctors are expensive or hard to come by. So this might be pretty useful. Um, maybe a device that could tell me when I need to go to a doctor. Like, we've talked a lot about different you know, health issues. What about something that could tell me, hey, I think you have a tumor? Kind of like a check engine light, if you will, right? Like, your car has one of those. OK, switching gears. What about education? Like the one laptop per child, maybe we'll have products that make it easier for kids to learn programming. Wouldn't that be cool? Something like the Wave thing that was just in the last presentation would be pretty neat. So helping kids kind of start to program earlier, starting to get excited about programming earlier. Drones and robots are pretty much easy to come by at this point. I mean, I can order like 10 different types on Amazon right now. Um, how many of them can I program? Maybe a few. Not all of them, for sure. What if I could get BB-8? You guys know BB-8, right? What if I could buy a BB-8 bot, bot from the store, and I could give him voice commands? OK, we've kind of seen that already. All right. But what if I, or my kid, could program BB-8 to do something different, give it an algorithm? That would be pretty cool, right? That would kind of spark their interest in what's going on. What can I, what can I do with this thing? What about stories as a service? We, we talk about all these different platforms, like Redis as a service, or, or I don't know, cloud as a service. What about story as a service? Then kids and their parents could create stories together. Instead of, hey, dad, can you read me a bedtime story kind of thing, right? That'd be pretty cool. We should also make it easier for parents to help their children without needing formal education in the subject. I think that'd be pretty amazing. Even our smartphones are going to evolve by 2050. It's certainly probably not going to look the way it does today. But what if we could create some sort of building blocks for kids that could take those devices and help them with their physical games? I mean, we want kids to be still playing outside, right, and being physical. So I'm thinking of things like hide and seek. What if that could be aided by some sort of device? Or Simon Says, you know, trying to run, run at each other with a ball. Um, or even dodgeball, for example. OK, switching gears again. What about thinking about the refrigerator or the dishwasher? Maybe there are a lot of inf like innovations that could be useful in the home and hopefully affordable enough for everyone to get them. Let me think. What are things that I have to do but I don't want to do? I've got a long list, let me tell you. Um, definitely chores are on the list, like dusting or cleaning out my cat litter boxes, which I do not want to do. Um, iRobot made us the Roomba, right? Could there be a robot dust bunny? That would be pretty awesome. We could market these things, different styles, different animals. That would be pretty cool. 
One major issue for me that I'd love to have solved or I would love to solve myself is getting my Amazon packages delivered to my actual house without a human having to be there, like a doorman or a, you know, like a locker, Amazon locker, anything like that. Um, I've actually thought about creating my own special lockbox that the delivery guy could come up to and like scan the package code and the thing would pop open and they could put it inside and then latch it. That'd be pretty cool, right? Convenient. Even cooking dinner. I don't want to do that. I deliver most of my food into my house. Um, it'd be great to have a home robot, drawing from one of the earlier presentations, a home robot that could actually receive my delivery, maybe from the box, maybe just as a robot, unpack it, refrigerate where necessary, and then actually make me dinner when I walk through the door. Hey, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> I'd buy one of those. Um, Perhaps my home robot could also monitor my preferences, like how sensitive I am to spice, how sensitive my family is to, I don't know, what are their interests, their likes, dislikes, you know, pulling data from different meals that we've had together and you know, hitting a like button. I don't know what it is, but being able to, for me, to say, hey, this is what I want to eat this week, the robot could do all of the ordering and then make it to the preference of everybody in the group. How amazing would that be? I think it could happen. Um, even better, it could know my budget for groceries and do all of my online ordering for me. That would be amazing. Hey, it's only 35 years, right? This could totally happen. Anybody want to work on this with me? I'm open. Looking for a team. <laughs> cool. I've got one. Um, these are all examples of things that I hope will already exist in 2050. I'm sure you have many others popping into your head right now. Yes? Show of hands. Anybody got an idea? Sweet. A lot more hands. Awesome. All right. So considering in 2050, there will be more women in decision-making positions, I'm hoping we get to that even balance. Yes? Awesome. The way we work may actually change as well. Um, the way we establish businesses may actually change. We will probably become more flexible and collaborative together. Should be pretty cool. Perhaps we can utilize social platforms and video conferencing kind of system ideas to share information um, and be able to work anywhere. That's something we all want to do, right? Who doesn't want to program on a, on a beach in Tahiti? I certainly do. Yes, exactly. So by 2050, perhaps there'll be holograms. So our meetings, we won't actually have to physically be in the meeting. We can physically be in the meeting, which everybody says is better than video conferencing, but we're actually wherever. That would be cool. So let's do that. <laughs> Perhaps even the way we create businesses will change. It'll become more collaborative. So right now we have like startups that go for venture capital funding, um, and they have a bunch of people that are thinking about their idea and giving them money and, and saying, you know, how, this is my input. Like you should change in this way. What if those people were actually helping build the business as well as getting their updates and giving them money? That'd be pretty cool. I kind of want to live in that world. Um, I would probably be more willing to start one of the business, crazy business ideas that I was just rambling off in that world. So I really hope in 2050 that we're no longer talking about women, bringing women into technology and, and other STEM fields, because it's already solved. Um, I'm hoping that Wise and Grace Hopper really become a distant memory. They're kind of part of our history. They're awesome, but we've kind of moved past it. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to be more focused on solving something like, hey, we need to figure out how to get rid of allergies quicker than like the, the shots that currently exist because the society of technological cat lovers can't bring their cats to work. I hope that's what we're talking about in 2050 because that would be pretty awesome. So what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm definitely going to continue to come up with crazy ideas. I'm pretty good at that, right? We all agree. Um, I'm going to continue to mentor younger women, women in you know, lower grades, in high school, um, middle school, first robotics, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to continue trying to bring people into technology. I'm also going to continue being a woman in technology because that is, those are my credentials. That is what I do best. Um, and I'm going to even continue trying to push within my own job that we can work in a different way, showing that there can be a change in the way we actually work. I'm also going to complain to Amazon about their package delivery system. I'd really love that robot box. <laughs> so seriously, I, I think a machine can do this, and I don't want to do anything I think a machine can do. Um, so I hope I've sparked some ideas for you. 
even if you completely disagree with every crazy idea that I've put forward to you today. No matter who you are out there, no matter what level, if you're in school and you're thinking about like, hey, I want to be in technology, or if you're, you know, have a classmate that is thinking, should I be in technology, should I not, should I go into science, what, what should I do, if you're a professor, if you're a parent, you all have a place in this discussion. Um, and, and encourage, cur encourage those people, encourage yourself, um, encourage your friends. Um, but what are you going to do to encourage it? 